Hey Property Insiders, Mike Stenhouse here and this is my 2016 year in review. Let's start off with the facts. A lot of people that a lot of people care about died in 2016 and this is a tragedy. The whole reason that we care so much about these people dying is that they have created something of real value for this world, whether that is films or music or art or breakthroughs in a whole host of different areas. It is of course sad that these people are no longer with us, but the fact of the matter is people die and people will continue to die long into the future. This is no reason that 2016 should be deemed the worst year ever. If you look at all the good stuff that happened in 2016, the list is phenomenal. We made huge strides in looking after our planet, looking after the people on this planet, looking after the animals on this planet. Leonardo DiCaprio even got an Oscar. So if you're sitting there or you were sitting there in the run up to Christmas thinking 2016 was terrible, you should not let any of these external factors, good or bad, affect your views on the year ahead or the year to come. The only person who made 2016 a good or a bad year for you was you. And the only person who can make 2017 an even better or worse year is you. Don't get me wrong, I was a fan of Prince, I love Alan Rickman, my parents even named one of their first bars after a George Michael's song, but 2016 was the best year of my life and I am confident and passionate about making 2017 even better than that. If you think about it, we have access to more information now at the click of a button than has existed in all of human history. I mean, we carry around on devices like this more information than any generation before us has ever had access to. Despite all the news that we hear about terror attacks and wars breaking out all over the world, we live in a more peaceful time than ever has existed in all of human history. And not only that, if you look at it from a business point of view, we can borrow money at incredibly low rates in this country to buy property as an investment. And it's one of the few times in history when saying that you want to be an entrepreneur has been a positively viewed career choice. In the UK, even when you include some of the poorest people in the country, as a whole, we are living in relative luxury compared to how people were living even 100 years ago. So isn't it about time that we stop complaining about all the little negative things that are external to our world and focus on what we can do to make our futures as good as possible? Even if we achieve nothing else today, we can watch this video and know full well that we're going home to have a roof over our heads and a meal on our tables. I could be negative and say that getting planning permission on Churchgate took way longer than I wanted it to. Refinancing our HMO on Broadhurst took way longer than I wanted it to. I never released as many podcasts on schedule as I wanted to. Blah, blah, blah. It is no surprise that as sure as the sun rises every morning, things will go wrong in our lives. Things went wrong for me in 2016. Some things went very wrong for me in 2016. And I am sure plenty will go wrong in 2017 and long into my future as well. But what is important is how we handle these things that go wrong. And I have decided that I am going to handle these things in a positive manner and make my own life the best it can be. So here is my positive 2016 year in review. Back in January, almost 12 months ago to this very day that I'm recording this video, we completed on Churchgate. By we, I mean my joint venture partner and I, and this was by far my biggest project to date. Despite the fact it needed full planning permission, it was in a conservation area, it had more bedrooms than I've ever put in a single unit, and the property needed significant amount of work to bring it back up to spec. We persevered, we made the decision to proceed with it, and we completed just after New Year 2016. We now owned a building that had the potential to give us both 
a significant return long into the future. That in itself is pretty cool, but if you consider the fact that 12 months prior to that, I had never even met this guy who is now financing my biggest project so far. In that period of time, I was able to meet him, build a relationship with him, work with him on a separate six bedroom HMO, complete on that and prove that I was able to deliver on what I said I could and persuade him to come on board with me on this next project. I was pretty damn happy with this result. So we were only a few days into the new year and deal number one was already underway. But as I said, it did need to go through the full planning application process. I knew that was gonna take some time. So we had to find something else to keep busy with. Now, thankfully, projects don't necessarily like to run to schedule and we still had a bit of crossover from an HMO that we've been working on in the latter part of 2015. So we were able to get that finished at the start of the year and get that fully tenanted, which increased our monthly income by about 12 to 1400 pounds a month, depending on how bills work out on a monthly basis. But another great project done and dusted and a great boost to our own spending money. So we're delighted with that. Got the planning application all submitted for Churchgate. We started off thinking 10 bedrooms, then we maybe thought 11 or 12. We finally got up to 13 before bringing it back down to 12. There was a lot of toing and froing about the pros and cons of more bedrooms, more income, less communal space, and all the things that went around that. So it took a little bit of thinking, but we finally got there. We got the application submitted. We had a couple other things going on at the same time as well. One thing in particular stands out in my mind was this great little summer HMO project that we did in Eccles for a client, an investor client. No joint venture, we had no stake in it. We purely offered them a service to source and renovate this house as we do for a lot of people. And it was a fantastic little thing just to fill the time in the run up to us getting planning permission on Churchgate. Now we worked on this with a project manager called Gemma. She is an HMO investor herself. She is far more organized than I am when it comes to stuff like this. And she did a great job making sure the project was finished. As I disappeared in summer for almost two months to get married to my amazing wife, Victoria. You can see why 2016 was a pretty good year for us. And then disappeared on honeymoon as well. So I was sticking my feet up on a beach in the Maldives. Gemma was back home working her socks off to get this house finished. I was expecting the planning permission to come in the day before our wedding and I got a phone call from our architect to say that it had been declined. And as you can imagine, I was absolutely gutted. So frustrated probably more than gutted. Just uh, I'd been through a lot of meetings with the planning team and the local councillors and we thought we had kind of ironed out all of the issues that had been raised, but it seems that we still hadn't quite done enough to meet all of their concerns and yeah, like I say, they rejected our initial application. So. I forgot about it for a month. One of the luxuries of working for yourself is that if you need to take time off, you can do that. Got back from honeymoon refreshed, full of energy, had a great meeting with our architect and my joint venture partner on that project. We revised the plans and we got the application submitted for a second time. Two of the major concerns raised by the local area committee were car parking and the size of the bedrooms. Now you'll start to get an idea of why I was so frustrated if I explained to you that all of the bedrooms were well in excess of the government standards for bedrooms in HMOs. Most times it's about 10 square meters for a double bedroom, six and a half, 6.7 for a single bedroom. The smallest rooms in our house were all 10 and a half to 11 square meters with most of them going up to 14 to 16 square meters. So the fact that the local councillors completely dismissed the government guidelines and said that despite all of our rooms being pretty big, they still weren't happy with it, was extremely frustrating. So we had to lose one bedroom. So we went from 10 down to nine after negotiating during the initial planning application from I think it was 12 or 11 back down to 10. We lost one further bedroom and the car parking was a bit of an issue as well. There was no land surrounding our building, but we were able to negotiate with the landowner who owns the car park at the rear, and we got sufficient spaces off her to give us the parking that we needed for the HMO. So we overcame their objections, we revised the figures, 
and despite losing the number of bedrooms with the extra space that we created we got more en suites in there some of them are more like studios now than individual bedrooms so the rent increased there and overall we're actually not down that much on where we thought we would be when we first looked at this project rents have gone up we've been able to increase the rents through some of the design that we've done and ultimately after another lengthy wait for the planning process we finally got our planning process approved on December 4th or 5th this year so about 11 whole months from first purchasing the property to getting planning approved we were delighted with the outcome but boy did it take a long time to get there over the course of the year we continued to release great content with some of the top investors in the UK including some of my favorite interviews with guys like Katrina Jones who is doing amazing stuff with her rent to rent portfolio Martin Skinner, Reese Riccardi, some really top notch big players in the property world. Not to forget our series that we did on goals with a couple of different investors where we tracked their progress throughout the entire year. Guys like Nick Leatherland, Marta and Lloyd Smith, Anthony Hubbard and Dane Sampson. Although he got so busy towards the end of the year, he couldn't even get back to us to do his follow up interviews. But that's just testament to the success some of these guys, in fact, all of these guys are having. And it goes to show if you look at our stats, January 2016 compared to January 2017 where we are now, our monthly downloads have almost tripled compared to where they were just 12 months ago and that is in no small part down to you guys listening to our content and sharing it and I am so appreciative for that. But again, this is not a bragging time. This is about how we can all help each other grow our own property businesses. And some of the value that I have created on the back of the podcast has been truly phenomenal. I guess if anything, that is my one takeaway from 2016, that by constantly trying to create value for other people and to help other people, more opportunities have presented themselves to us than I ever thought possible in terms of the number of deals that we're working on, the size of the deals that we're working on, some of the friendships that we've made and the business relationships that we have developed. So that really just leaves me wanting to give a bit of an insight into what I'm going to be working on in 2017 and I actually have an entire episode that is going to be dedicated to that coming out in the next couple of weeks all around the goals that we have for the year ahead, our goal setting process, why they are important to us and how we plan to execute and deliver on those goals. But just to give you a bit of an early insight for watching this, we have this great project down in Macclesfield that is going to be another nice boost to our income, which is going to be a joint venture, as I mentioned. So that money will be split between two of us, but it's going to give both of us a healthy boost. We have got Churchgate that is our passion to get finished off as soon as possible and start making an income on that. We had a lot of time lost on the planning process, so I need to pick up as much of that as I can over the coming months and hopefully have that one finished round about Easter. We've also got half a dozen to a dozen investors that are keen for our sourcing and project management service that have the funds available and are ready to go. So a lot of my time now is spent trawling through Rightmove and a lot of the local estate agents trying to find great deals for all of them. And to top it all off, even just before we get into the real nitty gritty of the deals that are gonna be coming in 2017, I've got my mastermind group and the HMO group that I need to make sure we deliver real constant value to and I love being able to run both of them and to help so many people with their own HMO investing. But we obviously wanna be focusing on some of our own deals as well. So we will be on the lookout for more big development deals, commercial to residential type stuff, flipping a few things to increase our cash pot that has been depleted with some of the HMOs that we've been working on. And I cannot wait to take inside property investing in a whole bunch of new directions as well. I feel like we've got a great foundation in place now. I probably said this at the end of 2015 as well. I'm all about the foundations. I never seem to get above those foundation levels, but 
My view is I need to keep building a solid base and every year resetting that baseline and pushing myself onwards and upwards to the next goals and the next targets. My success in 2017 is going to be entirely down to my actions and your success is going to be entirely down to yours. So what are you going to do over the next 12 months to live life on your terms to make 2017 the best year ever? You owe it to yourself to be someone and to create something that inspires other people rather than to have your success dictated to you by others. So I wish you all the best for 2017 and please let me know if there is anything I can do to help you on your own property journey.